finally able to start work on the big dark room project. Uh, and you can't see very much from this angle, so I'll get you swapped around and I'll give you a little panorama of what's been going on. Okay. Right, stop there, stop. Uh, I haven't done a proper introduction to this uh, little project yet, so this is what I'm going to do today. Welcome to a little vignette from the office. Um, it's a nice sunny day in the middle of October, and currently I've started my big darkroom project. What is that, you might ask? Well, I'm going to go from what has been initially a purely digital process to a hybrid analog and a digital process to basically having two processes, one digital, one analog, and also a mixture of the two. So the plan is, starting from scratch, to utilize the shed in our back garden, which already has light and power, which is 14 foot by 10 foot in old money. Don't know what that is in meters, but it's a good size shed. It already has uh, rapid racking shelves down one side and workbench all along the other. The power socket's over. So in some ways it's ready and prepared, but there's no running water. Uh, there's no blackout. Uh, and also I need to make sure that it's fit for its purpose in other areas so there's enough storage, there's all the accessories I need to place to suitable shelving, positioning the safe, safe light, uh, and just generally making sure the environment is suitable for use um, and that is a long-term project. So currently I'm at stage one sorting out the blackout. The main issue being the four windows in the shed which happen to be a size of two foot square or 610 mil in metric terms. Um, I found out happily that my local DIY store B&Q sold sheets of plywood which were 1.2 meters by 6.1. In other words four foot by two foot. So all I did was have two of these cut in two two pieces and each one should fit the resultant window uh, quite well. Now I say quite well because there's always going to be a slight gap so I'm going to need to work out how to fill that gap and also I'm going to need to work out how to fit and remove those so the plan is that I'm going to use magnetic catches on the side of the window frame to attach to little plates on the board so I can attach them and remove them very quickly and easily so that will prevent any issue caused by having to spend time taping up curtains or blackout with uh, bin bags as been suggested because I know I'm a lazy sod and uh, if it's not ready to go within a few minutes I'm gonna go oh I don't think I'll bother I'll just get a print digitally or something so hopefully that will mean that I'm pretty much set up to go all the time and that when I get the urge to print I'll be able to go out there and have a damn good time. Now, I'll take you through all the various stages at times but this is purely, this is where we're starting as a long road to go. I already have got some important elements of the uh, system in place but I think that's a separate vlog and uh, I'm really excited about getting it all put together and enjoying the likes of people like Ribsy and Shoot Film Like a Boss um, and various others in the analogue adventure which uh, I'm really enjoying at the moment. I mean sometimes things go wrong, we're dealing with old cameras, we're dealing with old equipment, old processes but I really actually enjoy the hands-on side of things so I'm looking to do things that become much more of an artisan, have input into all stages of the process right through to the finished one from taking the picture to that final print because at the moment if you're dependent on third-party labs or even digital printers there is an element of computer intervention which sort of does distance you from your work so I'm hoping just to sort of have a really good strong relationship with what I do it won't be perfect, it'll have the imperfections of analogue, but in a sense it'll also be more real, if that's any 
Does this make sense at all? Um, just to me anyway. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this, this vlog and all the other ones that are coming along, probably with lots of frustrations when things go wrong, uh, as they're inevitably bound to be. But if you're also in the position of doing a dark from, from scratch or thinking about it, you can learn from my mistakes and maybe you can help me too with the things I need to do. Certainly at the moment I'm thinking about ways of making sure the blackout is absolutely light tight. It's probably not going to be a big issue in, a, in the shed because it's at the bottom of the garden where it is fairly dark and I'm obviously going to do most of my dark room stuff in the evenings. So we shall see. So probably the next step once I've got these boards finished and I'll finish off this vlog with ready to go and then we're going to start looking at how do we make that blackout really really work so i'll probably have to do some work at night shining torches through putting lights on and seeing what comes out from inside and so forth but yeah feeling pretty optimistic anyway back to the vlog now over and out so the dark room project begins we can finally show some of the results of my labour. So we have one, two, three, four boards, which will be the main blackout for this operation. They will fit on the windows, as you can see. Each one has been cut to shape to fit one of those. And what I'm going to be doing is each one of these will have two handles on so that I can pick them up, slide them in. I may need to have something like Velcro or a rubber seal or something to try and make them 100% light tight. But they have been cut to the exact dimensions um, over there. You can see the larger cloak in a plastic bag. We'll do a big reveal in another vlog. And things a little bit more settled so that I can show you how it works without all the clutter here. Which, as you can imagine, there's a lot here. There's going to be some clearing out done. So eventually down that end where you can see that there's a coat and a coat coat rack uh, there's going to be a sink where you can where I can wash th things um, and and do other stuff uh, but to do that we've got to get water in in the first place and that's going to be coming in over the, to the left so roughly in that corner the water will start to come in, or rather, it won't start to come in. Uh, there will be connections for the hose. I'm hoping to get somebody who knows how to do plumbing to do that bit of work. But you can see electrics already in place, long workbench. When you get that painted, I'll also um, paint as much of the wood as possible. That's put in some insulation and also. Um, there I can get the gimbal to point in that direction. I'm gonna have some ventilation because we might be using noxious chemicals, particularly when we get to be using uh, um, colour. Sorry about all the gimbal wobbling about. It's me not being very competent. Um, three of the four panels have got the handles on. Um, they're now all been uh, undercoated and primered, ready for top coat. Um, some hurdles to overcome, like one of the handles cracked. They are only cheap uh, handles for cupboards. But as I'm only expecting them to um, carry a light weight, I'm not too worried. I've glued one to back together. I'm hoping that'll just do. Um, so the next stage is when this lot has dried, I've just applied another little coat of primer to the uh, to the handles once that's dry it's time to put on a top coat and in this case over there in the corner we have 
Johnson's black mat emulsion, which is actually the same as we used in our house for painting the beans. So hopefully that will be ideal for blacking out. And we've got a, quite a bit of that, so hopefully enough to do other stuff as well when it comes to it. But I know from experience that painting with black paint means you need a lot of preparation because otherwise black paint can really get everywhere. So that's it. That's the update for today. Stay tuned. More updates coming. Day two painting the four blackout panels in the Great Dark Room project. You can see the uh, first one in front of you with the Johnston's Black. It's emulsion paint. And uh, by God, that's a difficult paint to paint with. But we know that. So there we are. There's the other three panels, uh, all with two coats of black paint drying. Should be dry by tomorrow. Uh, and then I can go on to do the other side. These were made from sheets of plywood, which were nominally 610 mil in size. In practice, that means they're 24 inches, which means they fit exactly in the gaps uh, left by the windows, which were also that size. So I guess that's a standard size still for uh, construction in Britain. Uh, so what I've done is I've bought uh, cheap... Um, cupboard handles off uh, a local hardware store that screw in from the other side so holes drilled and then attached um, through that so that the idea is the panels will attach magnetically to catches by the windows so looking up so these are the windows and there will be catches magnetically attached or screwed to the sides of the windows which will attach to plates um, which then uh, connect with the magnets. I'll, I'll show you those in a moment. Okay, Blackout board is slightly different because it uses different kind of handles because I can only get the one set from the hardware store and I don't seem to have restocked them. So. Fortunately, I had some leftovers and pressed them into service and they'll be just as good. Let's face it, we're not doing this for uh, overall style. But I think you'll agree that the black seems to be pretty black. Bear in mind that the uh, they look grey on video because, uh, um, as you probably know, exposure meters tend to want to make everything middle grey so it doesn't understand that black is actually black but uh, you can see if I put the main point of focus somewhere else it darkens it down a bit so just moving up here we can see the little packs of magnetic catches which come in two parts the catch itself which will sit on the windowsill and then the plate, which will attach to the uh, blackout boards. Let's go up and across. So yes, you can imagine this I have in my hand is attaching to the windowsill like that. And the plate is then attached to the blackout board. So all it just snaps on and snaps off minimum fuss easy done and very quickly which should mean that there's no uh, barrier to actually starting doing uh, darkroom work rather than sitting there thinking oh I've got to go and black the place out of the area I'm going to need to be concerned about is the door frame which does let in light and if I take turn off the lights inside it will go dark but you might see light coming through certainly at the top there in the middle and some at the bottom so uh, yes there's some work to be done to uh, get those completely light tight right so that's it stage one completed uh, blackout boards completed now I need to get around to getting them fitted uh, so that they black out all the light and do some blackout along the door frame and then that hopefully will be that of the blackout I may do some painting around the windows and so forth and there's probably more painting to be done but I think we need to move on to stage two so I think
things coming up including sorting out water supply, putting in sink, plumbing yes. and there's the big enlarger reveal coming soon. That's it. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. See you soon.